So the talk of the town right now is all on Rivals 2, and that's granted because the game seems really incredible. But that should not take away from how well our players played last weekend, or I guess at this point is two weekends ago, maybe even more depending on when I get this video out. But I think it would be cool to cover those top eight sets, especially since this is Rivals of Ether's first top eight at Genesis. So sit back, relax, and let's get into Dirai versus Sego. So we're starting off on Jules Vale, not my favorite stage in particular, but a lot of players love the neutral here and I really like this. This is how you know these players are feeling each other out. This this moment right here, I already have to go back, right? But right here, look at what Sego does. He's a player who really teaches himself and prides himself on discipline, right? So there's gonna be times where he just refuses to move and it's not because he's like turning his brain off. He's doing it because he is not giving up his position you know he's holding position he's not just moving for the sake of moving like so many people do unnecessarily in rivals of ether as i say that darius literally using his movement as defense is what i'm talking about when i say movement is defense in rivals so he chooses to go back to neutral the game just started but this is what i'm talking about look at how sego just stays still he just takes a knee right he doesn't move darius moving right waiting for him to do something stupid but Sego is remaining in position, right? This is what he does often. So Dry is feeling out the situation, and I guess that's how we can say that's how Sego feels at this situation, right? And now they're on the move again, right? And now we're moving to the corner, but Olympia can fight out of the corner, or Sego, I should say, opts to fight out of the corner here with this crystal, which actually hits Dry. And now this is broken because it creates a lot of invisible pressure because that crystal can hit you, and now it's like. If I destroy the crystal immediately, you know, um, I could be with punished by something. So you don't want to immediately get rid of it because it's an obvious thing. But then also it's like if I move too much around it, he might pop the crystal and then I might get frozen by the crystal. So a lot of players just opt to move and don't do anything because they can parry the crystal. So this is what Darai opts to do. Most players just move around it. But this is what I'm saying. Darai is proficient. This is the proficiency of Darai. He gets hit by the crystal. The first thing he does, quick, hit fall, nares it. We're on the move. And not only are we on the move, we're already on the offense, actually. So he chooses to charge darts, right? He's like, all right, here we go. And this is what I'm saying. Look at the, the level of dart charge he's getting. One, two, and well, it's like one or two around there, right? And now that he has those amount of darts, they fan out. And so it's actually played out perfectly that he went for these darts because it set him up for this opening. Right, and it, I mean, he could have got a little bit more off of that, but again, it's like projectiles get beat by attacks, so it's like, yeah. And that's why Dorai doesn't immediately take his attack here, because he actually could have gotten hit if Sego was perfect enough, which is crazy. So he actually, so Dorai, what I'm saying is, so Dorai respects Sego, is what I'm trying to say, in other words. So it's like, bam, 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 right? Charge dart. He might hit me with this. Okay, uh, take that run away. Okay, that's what I'm saying, right? That's why he did that. I don't know where his double jump went, but Darai did not use his double jump in that sequence, and I think it was just a lot going on, to be real. But we're on to the next stock, and that's what I'm saying. These darts, this is the second time it's happened. Look at how he uses these darts as an anti-air, right? Like, this is the same exact scenario, actually. Landing, charging darts, and Olympia, right? Hold on, actually. Back here, landing, charging darts, Olympia, using a, a, vert or a horizontal approach option. Well, this time is a little more different because she just had to, you know... You side B, but as an anti-air, look at how early he throws these darts because they uh, they fan out and become an anti-air when he has enough charge. The darts are an anti-air. The darts are an anti-air, right? When they have charges on them. These are two experienced top players literally going back at it. So look at this. I get hit here, but he's closer. I'm gonna charge darts to you know, reset up that position. I need to go above the darts. They both are so smart. They both understand both of this. I'm going up high. Darai's like, oh shit, right? He's like, fuck, I didn't think about that, right? So now, Darai has used everything. Rano can now try to catch her landing here, but Olympia, where most characters would be kind of screwed here because she just air dodged and Rano has massive frame advantage, right? Um, she chooses the down B, right? <laughs> Which has armor, and this is nope. <laughs> I hate Olympia so much. It is crazy. Oh, I like the super jump there. Oh man, I wonder what. Oh! Her running, her using focus attack. 
dash cancel is nowhere near faster than her setting this crystal up charging the side b and then jumping with the momentum and now she's now she's like just one jump away from doing a, a literal like that was the read if sego would moved over just like a couple more pixels right he would have got this that's why it's actually insane he immediately like recognized to start charging this side b crystal to get in position for this but he almost gets it but doesn't matter because his crystal is so broken <laughs> I hate Olympia. I do. I do. I do. I do. But both both players are still insane. But you know, this is like a, a movement based stage is what I'm saying. And so they're both going to be moving a lot with these platforms and defending themselves with their movement around the platforms. Great opening by dry. Did you see how you move her? Oh my god. First of all, this is this, this honestly the sequence is fucking hard. Look look at how dry. I'm going to starting with this all the way over because this is actually so clean by dry. So look at this. Both players, actually. So look at how they're moving. Like, God, they're, like, feeling each other out in such a smooth way. Like, this game is so raw, right? And it, honestly, unfortunately for Durant, he messes up his wave land here, right? And so he opts to drop all the way down because he's like, I'm not going to that platform because I'll, I'll be closer to you. So, like, I'm going to drop through the through the platform because I already fucked up my, wave, my uh, wave land. So he's like, all right. And he's playing around, still feeling out the neutral. But uh, Sego is like, fuck this. I'm going to start establishing my crystal over here. Durant reacting and honestly going around that looking for what punish and then he opts to immediately break this crystal like very proficient by Darai. that's like the theme of this set is his proficiency honest to god and the quickness he, he had to like break this crystal reposition and then return to neutral to the point where sega was like oh shit let me reposition because olympia players they want to use that invisible pressure from that crystal to make you panic and make you do something so they can whiff punish but because Dry broke this crystal so fucking fast he's like oh shit let me get out of here <laughs> right and now they're back to neutral proficiency by Dry resulting in um his not him not losing his advantage in neutral like for a second he lost advantage the moment this crystal made that field but he, the advantage was lost the the moment it got broken by rano which is why it's so good that rano has quick uh nice broken hitfall aerial so he can actually hit something like this crystal hitfall it and then reposition again right and now he's like since you're throwing your shit, getting your projectile, getting your stage mechanic out, let me do my shit too. I'm not, let me not forget my own thing, right? Darcy darts, I try to get a mix up, but gets called out here for his mix up, and it gets naired, right? Because Sego just wants to go in, nair into up air, up air. Because you gotta realize when when Sego, for some reason, Sego must understand something about Olympia's nair. It must be cracked vertically, like, like, like it must be something about that where he just figured out because he is the only Olympia. Who, who who opts to nair in places where other olympias would probably nair one or up air i swear he, he opts to do the full nair every time almost so up air up air up air this, see look he, he finishes that nair that nair too there has to be a reason why he opts to nair too does it knock them higher up for these ladder combos literally i think that's what it is he's looking for a ladder so that's why he always opts to these nair twos and he's in his olympia combos right it's a side b because this move is so fucked up because there's no good di on it because it covers itself on di out without using a jump so you can if you di out you just keep side being you without jumping and so it's like well obviously i'm gonna hold in then because di out is free for you like okay well Darai played around that uh really well with that he still like Darai still opted to di out because her up b is so threatening it's like i'm gonna make you have to make the get the side b reads because this is the first time you put me in this situation you probably don't even have that read on me you know oh Darai is sick oh man and then look at this and then gets another open with his clean ass movement on that plat gets a weak back air recognizes that it's like at the angle where uh sego can tech now and so he's like just in case he techs i'm gonna do a short hop and delayed bear right he does this short hop back air delayed just to cover it but unfortunately he gets a little too antsy with that he's like oh i'm that nigga and then he's like oh i gotta get the hit a little miss input oh but then the speed again at which he's destroying these crystals this is what i'm talking about. this is why it's so sick to watch Darai. he doesn't let you keep your advantage long at all look at that no Fuck you and your crystal. Like, Sego couldn't even immediately set it off. He didn't even have the, the time to immediately set it off because Darai is not playing that game. He's proficient in this match. In that, in that sense of this matchup, he's not going to allow you to set up your stage control for free. Like, even there, I think even there, he, he, he wanted to get rid of the crystal. This little, this little mini juke back. Okay, gets parried, right? Because parried's broken, right? 
He's like, oh shit, I want to get that crystal. Like, he, he actually, like, itches there to break this crystal, right? He's like, no, I gotta get back to neutral, guys. That's stupid. Don't do that, right? But then he gets hit because he, he hesitated and then he died. Oh, man. Like, that is, that's why I say Olympia is so overpowered because she creates this invisible pressure for free. Like, for free. Look at this. It, even though Sego is using the pressure at a top level because he's smart as fuck, the pressure is still free, right? Like, look at this. Dry, should I break that crystal? Fuck! No! Get back to neutral, you fool! You're gonna give up your position to go break this crystal? Don't do that! But in that in that in this instance you took to do that, he came out with a fair and knocked you into the crystal anyway, which then froze you, and now you can't even tech this because it's broken, and then you die! And it's like, wow, what a character! Back into it, you get hit by the crystal again, and now you see this? Okay, this is that another crystal uh mini game here. So we're playing crystal mini games. So the first crystal gets broken. See, look, this is this is where the, the look at the neutral here. So Seiko drops down. And he threw that crystal. Darai broke the crystal, and Seiko said, "I'm not fighting without my crystal." So he jumps back to this platform and waits for his crystal to come back. Right? He's like, he's actually like, okay, actually he does go in. He does go in actually. Hold on. But if you notice, he's playing a more crystal-centered neutral. The reason why this is so powerful is because Rival is just such a movement oriented game and so for this big ass thing to say you are not allowed to just willy-nilly move in this in this entire area it's like what game are we playing you know uh Darai is like let's try something different let's play the will you press b button bitch kind of mini game like look at him Darai is like press b break the crystal because if you press b and i hit parry you'll get parry so Darai is waiting but uh, but Sego realizes that's stupid, so he's like going down here to actually use his real options, which are his normals. And then Darai's like, okay, I, now I will break the crystal now that I have confirmed that you are not looking for like a raw neutral B crystal stun, right? You know, and then they'll get parried by players that actually aren't moving as much. So that's what Darai was just testing, you know, just testing his patience, testing what kind of Olympia are you. Look at what Darai is doing. This is actually so, this is almost like break the targets, like level of execution. Literally, look at his, look at him. Oh my God. Wow, that's why this entire like part is so sick. Sick. Nope. Sick. Ugh. Like that whole thing was literally him just being clean. Like playing break the targets. Literally, he had to do so many micro execution things in that moment. That's why I want to cover this set. He's been practicing for so much. Look at that recovery. So up B to, to retain all resources. Wall jump. Immediate down B to get the most height he can and retain this height, right? To play with the most room possible to recover with because he can because you want to be able to double jump wave land if possible so he has the easiest double jump wave land with this perfect um immediate wall jump down b so he makes it the bubble makes up right and he sends the bubble up right because now Sego's focus is on this bubble he's looking up he's like okay what's this mix up he's gonna do upward with this bubble there is no mix up bitch it's just double jump wave land that's all it is but you're looking at the bubble because you think i'm gonna do something with the bubble rivals of ether creates geniuses Quote that, I swear to God. Waveland, F tilt for the mix up. Darts, wait for the parry because darts can, darts can give you many true combos, especially when you throw multiple, but if it's, it's a small frame advantage to where people can do, if they, if, they, if they want to, they can try to squeeze something out. So if you are experienced enough with Rano, you would know somebody might want to press a button here. And he knew that button would be parry because obviously that's what people do in Rivals. And it's like, bitch, yeah! <laughs> the Rai! The Rai is clean! Oh man, man, this is so sick. And Darai is meanwhile, Darai doesn't isn't sure, right, exactly what Olympia or what Sego's about to do here. So he just keeps it moving. And and the way he keeps it moving is so sick. Cause look at how clean this entire shit is. Wave dash back, wave dash back, wave dash back, wave dash back. What the fuck? He didn't you know what? So see like you see how Sego throws out a down tilt after that? It's just like in that scramble scenario, Olympia's going to win. Like I said, she's kind of like a better Rano in those scrappy scenarios. So instead of put yourself in like that weird 50-50 guess, get out of there. And then try to like look for a different opening. And like the the fact that Darai is doing all of this thinking like from the moment he's off stage. From the moment he is off stage, his brain is doing so many thoughts. He's he's doing all this from from the mix up, 
From 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 that to the read to the execution on that read to the Dacus to the setup with the invisible pressure to the to, to the respect that he made be scrambled into the back in the neutral like just top level play and then that Olympia up though <laughs> okay but then uh dive kick try to get back like often you'll see Ranos do this dive kick option solely because it is his way of getting back to the stage without using a resource he's doing up b down down b because rano doesn't have good air mobility right normally so they normally will opt to do this dive kick to get closer to the stage because after a certain point rano can jump out of it for a mix-up right like that and he throws these darts as the mix-up but unfortunately for him sego does the rawest up b through the darts so it's like did he just know rano players like to landing dart and so he just used to beating their landing darts with up b great experience by sego and or use of that experience by sego in this moment to punish Durai because i don't think Durai has done that before so insane that he just know he just knew their angle like and now he's just covering the option with fair like and that's what i'm saying even though Durai is playing damn near tass the experience from sego is allowing him to do far less needed and then get the same result that Durai wants my my lord what a se these guys are freaks. Oh, the movement! Darai! Oh my god, he's a freak! That's what I'm saying. It feels like sometimes you watch Ronald and Claren players, it's like they're playing like break the targets. Speaking of break the targets, literally once again, breaking the literal target into a parry read. Sego's parries are getting absolutely disgustingly red. Like this is god this is almost robotic play like i honest to god almost robotic like oh my god here it is so this is what i'm talking about with this clean play so he jumps up here as sego is charging this uh focus attack dash cancel right and since he sees him do the dash cancel he's like okay i'm gonna air dodge back to the ground right to avoid the dash um there probably right or just the dash setup but sego was going for like a a mix up with the dash in general and looks for an opening with this dare they both are looking for like an opening they're both wet oh this is such a hard shot they're both looking for like a, a, a committal option and they're both off by like just a little bit oh rivals of ether all right yeah okay and so they both are reset to neutral and they both re they go back because they're looking for like they don't want to be opened up they gotta you gotta respect each other and so that's what they're doing they're giving each other space because this is like mutual respect right and now Sego looks for his opening with like a gem and uh Durai opts to go to a platform because ronald aerials right so bam, this is their, their they're playing to their character strengths, and this is how you actually, when you get good enough, you can start preying on people using their character strengths. Like that's why I used to say I thought Fours Run was so bad because every Fours Run player back in the day used to just jump the plats over and over and over because they're playing to their character strengths. So, that, but anyway, that's again a little too scientific or whatever. But like, yeah, this is <laughs> Donovan. What? <laughs> ah! Anyway. So back to Durai and Sego. Okay, so plat drop bear meets gem brokenness, and then they both see. Notice, this is this is the they're both trying their neutral mix-ups. One tries gem, one tries plat drop aerial. That doesn't work. We reset to neutral by by disbanding, and then we try our next neutral mix-up. And then if that doesn't work, they disband again, and then they try the next neutral mix-up. This is what I mean when I tell people. All you need at the end of the day are mix-ups. And I mean that in the in, even in a neutral sense, not in advantage sense. In every sense, you just need a new way to do something else, and then you'll find an opening, or you'll find a, a mix-up on his DI. You'll find a mix somewhere in his recovery, or how he's edge guarding. You need a mix to everything is what I mean, and this is what they're doing. They're trying their mix-ups until they find an opening. Both looking for the neutral mix-up. Can't get it. Uh, looking for the neutral mix-up. Can't get, oh, actually, oh, they're kind of pushing it now. So they're kind of getting tired of the neutral mix up disbanding thing, right? So, right in this skirmish, here we go. So, in this skirmish, happens they, they, they disband once, they disband twice, and now they're like, We're not disbanding thrice, we're going in, we're going in. Ah, uh, trades up air, ah, uh, there, there, there. Oh, we the air dodge, punish the air dodge with a reaction with another up air landing. There gets punished with a landing option. I'm telling you, Ronald players are looking for them landings, and once. Uh, uh, experienced Ronald realizes he took your double jump. He took your air dodge. What's left? He has to land. Experienced Ronald tongue landing. This is what this. Oh, these players are playing to their character strength so well. This is what it means to be playing this game for all these years, dog. You just, you just, you, you become ridiculous. Down to Nair up B. 
I'm getting to the point where even I know when these upbeats are coming because I know Sego is the type of Olympia that goes for upbeat after Nair 2. Like, again, I only knew that because look, he lands Nair 2. Sego's like, I'm going for upbeat. Nair 2 has to be the most consistent setup in the upbeat in terms of hit stun, in terms of like, aim, like how high it knocks you up, right? And so Sego must always like to cash in on these upbeats after in case they, they fuck up the eye because his move is extremely hard to uh, the eye. Oh, damn. But it's, this is what I'm saying again, though. Ronald has to go through the same spot every fucking time. Look at him. He's like, okay, how does he get there? Wait for it. Upbeat. He tries to mix up for the first time. Upbeat. Dive kick. Wall jump. Upbeat. It's a dive kick again to try to like a last desperate option because he realizes it's not enough because because uh, Sego didn't commit. So he gets armored uh, here and then just dies. And it's like, okay, hold on. The bubble. And then wait for it. Another mix up into like what can Ronald do? So let's actually dissect this last edge guard. So he tries to dive kick, double jump, mix up with the dart again. This happened before on the left side. This exact scenario happened before on the left side, which tells you that Sego is just straight up experienced in this matchup. Because he chooses to do the upbeat through the dart because attacks be projectiles. And now you have to try to DI this shit. He tried to kill you from th for throwing a dart. That was so smart. And so now that Durai doesn't have a double jump and, and because he tried to dive kick mix up dart because that probably just works against everyone else because they who has a plan against you know falling Ronald dart like 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 Sego does and so now he has to do this really committal upbeat and then he tries the last desperate option dive kick which just gets beat by this into down smash but bubble save we get another chance here but we have still have like actually we have all our resources technically but we're going low because we're Rano. You know why, actually, he went low? Wow. Wow, that's why he went low. He went low because because Rano's best way of going high is dive, kick, double jump, some mix up. But he tried that on the left side, it got fucked up. He tried just now on the right side, it got him upbeat. So as a player, he's like, stop trying the high recovery, go low. That's why I say Rano can't go high. So he tries to go low, but then Rano can't go low either, funny enough. And then he does an upbeat, which makes Sego feel like, I don't know exactly how high you're going, so I'm going to do a preemptive neutral beat just to cover an option, right? This is why he's doing this, this neutral beat, just to cover an option. And so now we get another wall jump um, bubble mix up here, right? And, he, and Darai is going for the same set setup, which would have worked, actually, this double jump wavelength. Because you see Sego actually gives up the position because he kind of doesn't know the mix up. I don't think Sego just ready for the double jump wavelength mix up. I don't think he's thinking of that actually as a mix up. And so he's not actually seeing what, what is, at, or maybe he was, because he actually came down with the perfect spacing. I don't know if this was actually the perfect timing though. This is actually kind of a very interesting part of the, of the, of the game, because look, bam, off stage. Fuck the high recovery, I'm going low, right? And also this gem is broken. <laughs> so he, go, he goes below, bam. This is a very interesting moment. Because I don't know, personally, if Sega is aware of the Waveland. He probably is, to be honest. Because th he, do he doesn't go to this platform the first time, you know? So this time, he's like, he dashes out of it. He sees the bubble. He's like, is he doing that damn Waveland again? Maybe he sees the air dodge here, and he just reacts to the air dodge and tries to fair that. Because then he dry would have probably died, because, you know, you can't you can't tech after you hit R. So if you air dodge, you get hit right after. Uh, you, you can't tech. So maybe he was looking to prey on that fact, or maybe he was just ready for the Waveland. I either way, though... Dry messes up his wavelength, ends up off stage like this, and now he has to uh, be horribly. And Ronald's recovery is not good, um, so he has to do like this desperate last attempt dive kick to either get to the stage as fast as possible while also at least trying to like hit him maybe. But Sego's not having that and just down smashes it, and then the way it's spaced, you can't really get to the bubble. The only difference here between these players is not execution skill, it's not really anything except experience. And so that tells you when Darai gets the experience that Sego has, or that 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 amount, he's going to be disgusting. <laughs> he's because he's already disgusting. Sego's exerting less effort because he doesn't have to do. Also, oh, look at Olympia's eyebrows. Holy shit, is that Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie? <laughs> ah, okay, that might get me to like her yet. Okay, like Saitama, like that. Oh, that could be like oh my god, Rivals too. That this could be like her Saitama okay face. Please give her this as her okay Saitama face. Oh, that'd be so funny. I would literally die, but to many things other than that, to be honest. But that as well. Tries to get tongue. Gem with punish on the tongue. And then Sego starts charging to side B. So he parries to try to time this. He even delays the look at he's crouching like do it, do it. Parry. But 
you're in you have so much time on this side B so he's like oh, now I'll parry I mean I'll let it go now that I see the parry punish does oh man I thought he got actually I, I didn't think he actually got the read I thought he actually uh dropped the the, the, uh, the opening wow he actually just used the gem wow Olympia is something okay yup bam bam yeah yeah once I see another parry yeah bam another and then you get this which breaks out the crystal and now the edge guards oh wow he's catching everything the gem is just lining okay what is Sego? i wish Sego would just do the streamline thing sometimes because like it starts to get a little excessive um so he gets hit by a a, a chris another crystal into a fair spike and this is the part i'm talking about where i wish sometimes Sego would just do the streamline fair spike and then when they obviously di in because they don't want to die <laughs> you down air them um, for Rano and it, oh, I like that um, that delayed nair just to stick something out there just to be like if you come down here at this Timing you're gonna get hit by something into my advantage state and he chooses to back air out of this Which kind of grows the way he gets it and he gets another back air and the hit falls it to get back to the ground And honestly, I wish dry space this a little bit better So you can be a little closer to Olympia after that second hit fall back air because now he can't really do anything like guaranteed after this and he has to give up the the, the, the position and let Olympia back. And actually, I kind of like that uh, Sego mixes up his recovery here. Because he I'll, every Olympia in the world is just doing the dash all the way to the stage. Because it's an obvious way in, right? Like, why wouldn't they? Uh, Dry with the dart. Most Olympia players are now tempted to dash under Dry here to get to the stage. Because, oh, he whiffed, the, he whiffed something. But actually, you would be screwing yourself because darts have, like, zero whiff lag. And so he could still... Use a real button like a falling nair here and, and punish you for, for wasting your armor here. So what Sego, an experienced player, is doing here instead is holding his armor because he realizes it's actually kind of still a bait. He's, it's still kind of a bait. Look at the like Dari is still actionable. And now, if you want to charge this dart, like you just didn't have to double jump into it. Oh, I see. I see. Dari, he just double jumped to reposition against in case Sego released his dash attack as like the actual dash. He was like trying to avoid it so he wasn't even looking to, to punish the dash he was looking to avoid the dash entirely with just a jumping dart like oh let me get away from that but sega was thinking okay in case um he does like a falling aerial to beat my dash i'm going to go low and just charge my, my down beat all the way and he's going for a low recovery so they both were thinking entirely different about that scenario which is insane bam dry whiffs down tilt tries to whip punish because that's what ronald's do while Sego is like looking to like use his pressure with spacing to like because Durano has nowhere to run and so Dry, Dry is like nowhere to go and so Sego's like okay I'm coming out with an air a big a fat aerial coming out with a fat aerial fat aerial right trading with this giant nair too but Dry is like okay I'm gonna just trade with something fat too which is just up tilt right some fat. so that's what people do they just throw out hitboxes sometimes to, to cover space when they don't really know oh my goodness like the movement on both these players is just so nice and Dari just like weaving around so many things right like bam nope okay looking for opening nope reposition oh just the, so I'm okay not pressuring on with the darts and I kind of hope in rivals too he gets oh my god he's like okay put bubble up here up air it in case I get hit by like a down smash or up smash or something kill move I will DI it toward my bubble and I will live that's why he up airs it up there and now he can play with that bubble up there with kind of some safety and knowing like he can do a couple like risky things knowing the bubble can save him and again these fairs need to be killing but it's so hard today's matter could these fairs kill Ronald oh the first person I've seen actually do this I love doing this with Silvanos myself you do ledge cancel oh my god these backers but you ledge cancel right a move like up B down B the dive kick and instead of double jumping like everybody fucking double jumps out of this or, or attacks out of their ledge cancel people stop doing that start wave landing out of your ledge cancels wave dashing backwards actually are the it's like the easiest juke in this in the game no one is ready for this right here I do it all the time with Silvanos up B no one's ready for this at all bam wave that wave land and or wave land or wave dash back out of it no one's ready for that and so sego probably thought drive was going to go like, jump away or whatever so he remains over here but but Dry was like no wave land back and oh you're still over there i mean it's plat drop bear oh i love that uh the super jump but it's like you're, you're so close to, to sego that he can he can like pressure because rano doesn't have rano cannot land for shit i hope you guys i hope you guys know that rano cannot land with an aerial for shit if you have any dish joint at all, this frog is like terrible. So the super jump is cool as a neutral mix up, but you're so close to him when you're doing it that it's like you kind of are putting yourself 
in Ronald's worst position, which is when someone is directly underneath you, you have to land with an aerial. And it, cause especially because your aerials don't have a good disjoint, and that's why it gets beat by Olympia's up B. Which is like just almost no disjoint, really. To me, or maybe it's like a small amount of disjoint, but your Nair couldn't even beat that. So that's why I say Ronald cannot land in this game. He can't land with aerials. He's a very fair character. He's a, If you know how to abuse his weaknesses of his landing or lack of landing options and his recovery spots being very similar. Damn, that up air was clean, Sego. Uh, nice timing, like delay and punishing uh, the, like the dry edge guard. But then here we go. Dash tech out it. That's what I'm saying. And the way uh, Sego is actually like positioning this up air is so sick because dry just tried drifting to the left. And so he's probably going to drift to the right. So I need to position myself closer to the right. So he's up airing him with like the leftmost part of his up air so that he can remain as as far to the right as he can. And now he, he has the cool fair op. If you actually look, this is why Drifty Eye is kind of sick in this game. Like this, Drifty Eye makes this game raw. Like regardless of Drifty Eye is in Rivals 2 or not, and I actually kind of hope it's not at this point. But regardless of if it is or isn't, um, that will never take away from how raw this game is made by Drifty Eye being in it. This game will always be the rawest platform fighter because what I'm about to show you right now. So, so this right here, Durai gets caught here, right? His initial DI is fucked because he, go, he goes nowhere. So he tries drifting out and that gets caught. And so now he gets up tilted and he tries drifting in as the mix up. And Sego is so good at this game, he was keenly aware of that small drift DI mix up. So he knows that now he's going to drift out again for another, because that's what we do in Rivals. We, we, we test your DI, okay. We're gonna mix your DI. If we drift left, drift right, drift left, drift right. We're mixing your DI. Sego is already aware of the pattern. He's like, okay, he drifted right, he drifted left. He's probably gonna drift right again. So he's positioning this up air to where he is on the right most of Durai. Notice he didn't move to the left at all to catch him with this up air because he already knows Durai is DI'ing to the right with his drift. So he's still in position to get this fair. Okay, he was already ready for this fair. Look at him, he's licking his fucking lips literally because he's that focused. I'm not kidding, like literally he's that focused right now on Durai's DI. That's how genius you will be become playing this game. But he can't get the he can't pull together the edge guard here, so Dry gets actually to like come back. Uh 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 uh. Right? He tries to catch that die kick with fair. And so Dry is looking for a timing mix up with like this side B because he sees Olympia throwing out hitboxes, right? Ronald's waiting for jab one and two, and then he can he can like try to do something after the jab one two. So he's delaying like while Sego is so he's delaying the, the jab one two Sego is doing here and trying to get in between that But Sego just canceled it like you know out of the jab two into down tilt or just does down tilt out of jab two This is what I mean when I say Ronald is a fair character Sego is throwing out enough hitboxes saying I know you can only come here Rano I just need to wait for you to get here. So let's jab jab down tilt jab I promise you if that jab at that down tilt whiffed Sego would still throw out hitboxes because it's all about Rano he, what, when are you coming here, Rano? When, when are you gonna get here? I know you're only coming. You're only coming here just to this point. When are you gonna get here? So I'm throwing hitboxes, but crazy enough, Darai finds himself a miracle on the other side of, of Olympia, and finally the first fair of the set that actually kills off stage. Like this is everything for Rano, and it's. <laughs> And even this setup wasn't even true. Like, this is what I'm saying. It's so hard for Ronald to get these fares nowadays. Bam. Okay. Charge darts. Invisible pressure from the darts. Makes Sego dash high. Wave dash back from Durai. Dash attack with punished by Durai. Off stage. Throws darts to force an option. The option that was forced was the air dodge. And the thing he punished was with the first fare. That's the amount of conditioning that Ronald has to do just to kill you. But Durai did it. He fucking played target practice. Proficiency. See, that's kind of, I kind of want to see Ronald's like purposefully not hit you yet. Like, like instead of taking your guaranteed nair into like guaranteed, you know, immediate like hit or whatever, I want to see like a slightly more delayed hit to like fuck his DI even harder. Like, 
like like like, a, like if you time that fair just a little bit longer he pops out of the bubble and then that fair is like because the the bubble actually reduces the knockback you take that's why you can you can get combo by, all over the place by the bubble it reduces the, the amount of knockback you take so if if you're if you're getting hit by a strong move you won't die if you're in the bubble so if you if ronald players just slightly times a little bit longer on that bubble to like pop that fair just kills on this like di out it's kind of like raster doing up b like on a like on di out it's like oh i didn't expect raster to up b me on my di out at 35 on this combo like i think ronald's need to be doing more delayed forward errors on that tongue on the tongue punishes to try to catch bad di on, on di out on the bubble bam oh immediate tech that was oh and that's why the, the the recovery system in this game is so raw as well because it's so deep so like he up he, he's kind of like ronald's kind of pressuring you to like not hit him because if you because if you hit him here right he can just simply tech back here but if you don't hit him he can just wall jump out of this and then double jump and then wave land on stage and it's like do you want to deal with that mix up and like let him reco recover or do you want to like you know try to hit him because if you try to hit him again oh i'm a fair you okay thanks bro free recovery tech back air and now i'm pressuring you and i'm actually back to center like you know what i'm saying like kind of makes ronald recovery look good sometimes when that when that situation occurs but that doesn't happen enough to where i think like ronald, i can say ronald's recovery is amazing so we got jabs coming out into down tilt Dry DI's in on the down tilt because the gem's behind him and no one wants to DI towards that gem. This is what I say when I'm this is what I mean when I say that gem is free, invisible, invisible pressure. Cause this is this is like oh no. Okay, look, this is how you know the tournament nerves are here. Cause there's just absolutely no reason in hell for Dry to parry here. Dry's at 0%. Olympia's at 150. He gets put on the platform. From this up air, double jumps away, but then he whiffs his landing there. And where most players at 10% would know, you know, well, not most players, but like you can just tell the nerves are here because I'm sure Dry knows this himself. You're supposed to move in this scenario. You're supposed to attack, jump. You're not, you're the last thing you're supposed to do is parry. You are not supposed to parry there because you're at 10. You know, like, you know, you what are you scared of? You know, you need to keep it moving. And so he gets hit by this Olympia cheese. Ooh, I like that. So, Sego, like, honestly, looking for the kill with these up air. Sharking with up air, right? Building the damage. Ryan, great recovery to knock Sego across stage, but gets greedy as hell with this, like, uh, Dak is I'm saying like there's no need to to be excessive with how you get how you get this kill right now You don't need to rely on a parry on a platform at 10% You don't need to Dak is or charge a Dak is because just because he's at 160 and you, you don't you don't want to lose You got to um still play the neutral a little bit Especially because you actually were getting the, your most kills off of the like, raw neutral hits anyway This is like the best time to go back to doing that up to It's that timing mix up from Darai. Exactly. It's, again, look at what Darai is doing, guys. Rano can only go to the same spot. It just comes down to mixing up how he gets to the same spot. Wait and delay what up B spin. Make the make the down B bubble. Right? Try to try to try to mix them. But again, this is that this is that that's all the bubble is just the the bubble is just a distraction for what for what do we know again for the third time? Double jump waveland. And and again, because it's the third time, even Sego remembers about double jump waveland. So Darai needs to stop doing double jump waveland at this point of the set. Because Se uh, Sego is hard reading it and gets a hard oh my god, he gets he gets the set because of that. Actually, I didn't even know that I thought, dang, I didn't know the set ended here. Yeah, look at that. This all happened though, because this this is the third time Darai um went for um double jump waveland because it's it's honestly rano's best recovery it's just they try to they try to discuss i i know that because sylvanos's best recovery is also double jump waveland so like yeah that's why he's just delaying the inevitable which is double jump waveland with distractions up b spin sego's like okay but when's the double jump waveland okay Dry. okay stalling with down b Okay, Sego's like, but where's the double jump wave land? Wait, here it is. Double jump wave land. And punish the whole time. Actually, that was a dive kick. Holy shit. It's so, like, this I'm saying. People can shit on Sego all they want about him playing Olympia. 
But, but you just sound so stupid to me because you're not looking at the things that actually make him a top player. You sound like a scrub, literally, if you say he's carried by any character. Because he's so smart with any character he plays. Because look at this, he's, all, he's just so keenly aware of the Rise player habits. This is not even Rano versus Olympia anymore. This is Sego versus Dorai now, literally. And so it's like, where's your double jump waveland, Dorai? Here it is. Cause I, well, I have to disguise it. Hold on. Okay, wait, hold on. Wait, and now it is here. And now we call that out with Nair, this gigantic broken move. And now here's the second mix up. Look at, look at how focused Sego is even. Like it's just how you know. So Sego's like, okay, before, He's been doing immediate dive kicks, like to like, retain his double jump because Rano, he, he, does, he doesn't have good air mobility. So he has to use things to supplement his air mobility. So Sego is like, okay, he's gonna do an immediate up B down B to save his double jump. And so what does Dorai do? He doing, he's doing a dive kick, but Sego is already aware that he's doing the dash attack dash cancel to meet you there and fair you for set. And that's why I say that rivals of ether literally create geniuses. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time for another set review. Pew 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 pew. Also put this put this shit all off of Twitch. It's like fire on fire. That's zetter on zetter. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing better. Money going up, bought a uh, new leather. Got the overheat like man. What's the weather? Wanna full air? That cheese, that cheddar. Fire on fire. That's zetter on zetter. Ha. Hey. Yeah.